Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, we are continuing on our series of each team in the league and uh, what their free agency and stuff, what, what they've done so far this summer and where they may be heading in the future. All of that we did, uh, Cal- we did our, we're doing it Perlo alphabetically, which basically means alphabetically-ish because we've already did Dallas and stuff like that. I do everything-ish. It's close okay. to. But we've been saving the Boston Bruins for this man right here from the Hockey Raiders. Delhi, Delhi is friggin' awesome at Delhi Tweets, right? Find him on uh, the Twitter for that. Uh, I uh, I discovered him by just that on on Twitter. I like to listen to, to writers, and I listened to his stuff, and I was like, wow, I'd love to have him on. Reached out to him, and he said, yeah. So we're doing this on a regular basis, and we're quite enjoying it. Delhi, how you doing there, big guy? I'm doing well, thanks. Sorry, it's kind of my fault. I feel like it's a little bit my fault that you did it a little bit out of alphabetical order. I had a family thing come up last week, so we had a delay. No, no, this no. Week. I did all of it, <laughs> like, not really in alphabetical order, because that's just the way I am, so you don't need to apologize at all. Oh, no, no problem. <laughs> but I'm happy to talk I'm happy to talk Bruins. I, I, like like you mentioned, I, I normally write about the Ducks on Hockey Writers, but I'm a, I'm a New England boy, and uh, pay attention to the to the Bruins pretty much as much as I do the Ducks, so I feel like I can talk some good some good Bruins hockey. <laughs> Sweet. So uh, the Bruins and this this they've had sort of a well they almost had a quiet summer and then we had some big things happen. So what do you think about what the Bruins have done so far this year and what how does that paint a picture where you think maybe they're looking towards the future? Uh, I, I what I personally want them to do is is maybe pump the brakes a little bit um, talk. I mean, the moves that they've made clearly show that I think they're trying to give their young guys a chance. Uh, they obviously decided to, to, or they haven't re-signed him yet, but uh, Jake DeBrusque seems like he's going to be a priority since they let crew go. And it was, it seemed like it was kind of one or the other uh, with their cap situation. So I think, Overall, that's a good idea. I love Krug. Krug is one of my favorite players uh, in the NHL just for the production he created with his size, his physicality, um, only being 5'9", but just doing those things. I loved Krug, but at his age, with the amount that he was asking for and, and the term, uh, it it felt like it might have been a risk for the Bruins, who who really where they are now should let some of their younger players take over. They're still very competitive, but you, when you want to do a rebuild instead of a retool instead of a rebuild, it's it, sometimes there comes a time where you need to let those younger guys step in. And I think this is a good opportunity for that. So uh, they've got to re-sign to Brusque, which I think they're going to do. And then you've got young guys like Grizzly coming up who really have showed some offensive potential, uh, been good players overall, but now with maybe more minutes and more responsibility with crew gone. Uh, that'll be very helpful for the Bruins, I think, to at least know where they are generally, because you've you've got an Eastern uh, uh, Atlantic division that's that's really I think going to get more competitive. You've still got Tampa, who's who's I think the the top dog there. Montreal's gotten a lot better. Even Ottawa, who I don't know if they're going to compete for a playoff spot, but they feel like they've gotten a lot better. Uh, so it's going to be a very competitive uh, division for them, more so than it has been the past few years. So I think. They kind of are in a little bit of a transition, um, but I'm excited to see where they go with it. Yeah, it does seem like they are in a transition. Uh, I mean, Bergeron's not getting any younger. Uh, the, the fortunate thing for them is they still have a fairly young Pasternak to build around. And uh, Marchand's not overly that. He's probably got several good years left in him yet. Um, it's... It's kind of an odd place to be. Uh, maybe a good place for a retool at this time. Uh, I letting crew go at the you know when it first happened, I was just like, really, like what does this make now? What are we doing here? Like <laughs> it's it was it was hard to wrap my head around because I I like Krug a lot too, and I think he gets a lot of flack from people. I think it's just because he's small. Like if there's ever one defenseman that I think never got enough credit because of his size, it's Krug. And uh, I think St. Louis did well doing what they're doing, honestly, with Peter Angelo uh, not signing him and taking Krug. At least on paper, it makes a lot of sense. And I like Grizzlick actually quite a bit. I, I think Grizzlick has a good opportunity to be a one-two guy. And how is that going to happen if Krug's there? So uh, the more I thought about it, 
the more I thought, hey, you know what? And Lauzon needs some time here. They're, they, uh, Brandon Carlo is is only getting better. Um, they got a solid. They still have a fairly solid defense there. Yeah, and they they have some young guys even beyond that that are going to need some some. Uh some seasoning and some NHL experience. I mean, before, before we actually got on the air, we were talking about some of their draft picks they've made over the last five years. And it's really come time for those guys to, to see if they can make it or break it in the NHL. You mentioned Lu- Luzon. Uh, they also have um, Sinitsin and they have uh, Vaca nine and is another guy who's played a few games. He was 27 uh, to oh, excuse me, 2017 first round pick uh, on the offense. You've got Jack Stadnika, so you've got Trent Frederick there. So you've got some guys who are are going to need to be given an opportunity if you want to see what they're really made of. And so I think that's uh, that's kind of where the Bruins are while still being able to compete. And don't forget that that Sweeney Don Sweeney's G, uh, John that ugh, word vomit Don Sweeney's draft picks uh, over the last half decade have been somewhat controversial. He feels like he's been tried to be the smartest guy in the room and. Sometimes it worked out and sometimes it hasn't. So uh, I think this season is going to be kind of time to ultimately decide if those if those kind of controversial picks are, are going to work out or if, if they're going to need to uh, keep some of those draft picks that they've given away at the deadline in the in the upcoming uh, years to kind of reload and, and get their farm system and and their young players kind of back in back on track. Yeah, um, that was. I'm gonna probably do a video on this sometime. But um, one thing I think a lot of people don't realize is when, say, Don Don Sweeney wants to make his three picks in 2015, which was a huge thing, right? One of them was Zaboral. That's a guy that my, they I've heard that they're really gonna give a shot to make it this year. And if there's one team that knows how to bring up defensive defensemen like Vakakainen, Vakakainen, I think is his name, and Zaboral. And those kind of guys is Boston. Boston seems to do very well at it. Probably having Chara there helps for, with that. But uh, they seem to do very well. But a lot of times when you go do the interview process, you got a guy like Barzal, for instance, who is who they could have taken in that spot. But his agent's going, you've got Krejci. You've got my client doesn't want to go to Boston. What are you going to do? You're going to draft them anyways. You know, there's a lot of things like that. I think that happen when you draft when a team is drafting where people that people don't realize sometimes they're just that player did not want to go there, and uh, that that can happen a lot, especially for a team like Boston that has that much depth. Yeah, but you wonder also just hindsight, realizing how good of a player Barzal ended up being. Like if if the Bruins had picked him. They probably, I mean, Krejci's been the subject of trade rumors for a few years anyway. So you wonder if the Bruins would have actually traded him. And you wonder, I still wonder if they're going to trade him this offseason for somebody. I mean, he, he's been really a, a, a great Bruin over the over his time, his entire career. But, I mean, you can only have trade rumors surrounding you for so long before it actually happens. And, and his contract at $7 million, over $7 million a year for this last season. Uh, I'm curious if, the, if they're going to really hold on to him till his contract expires after the season or, or make a trade. It's, it seems like kind of a, uh, intriguing thing. Yeah. Krejci has been fortunate enough to have a contract, uh, that's fairly big. And, uh, <laughs> also I, unfortunately for him, but still kind of fortunate for being in Boston injured a lot. So it's kept a lot of people off the Krejci radar, Krejci radar and I think it may continue on doing so in a flat cap world so they may end up being that but in the long term sure Barzal could be but like I said it's hard to uh, draft someone if an agent say my client doesn't want to go there and uh, he, he definitely got more of an opportunity on the island to be a number one center and I think this happens really an awful lot. Zaboro wasn't off the board DeBrusque still was. I wonder about guys like Connolly. Like, why would I mean? He looked like he was the far better pick at that time. But again, those things can still be there, even for a guy like Connolly. Might have been saying the same thing. And there was also I'm trying to remember if it, I think it was 2015 where there were rumors that the Bruins were going to try to trade like a package of picks for Hannafin. I think or or the pick, uh, trade up into the draft so they could select Hannafin. Who what, oh, yeah. did he go number two or number three? So I think it was three. Yeah, so I, I remember, I think that it was 2015 where people were kind of almost positive that was going to happen and then it fell through and it almost felt like the Bruins didn't have a plan at that point. Uh, but they made all three picks and, and 
what all three of them have have played some NHL games. I think, yeah, all, and including DeBrusque, and then in that 2015 year, you you also picked Brandon Carlo in the second round. Uh, so he has worked out tremendously. I mean, he's their best shutdown defenseman at this That's point. Crazy. So, yeah, yeah. And so it's hard to fault Sweeney, and uh, like you said before the show, kind of a mixed bag. It's hard to fault Sweeney for the picks that he's made, but sometimes you wonder. Like, what, he seems to make it up in the late rounds. And also there's another part of Boston, and we talked about this before, is the big thing like with Hamilton and Sagan, they don't want partiers in their group. So they want a family guy, clean cut type stuff. So I don't know what Barzal's personal life is and stuff like that. But for a team like Boston, they will avoid even more talented players for that reason. So there's that aspect as well. And also the other guy going, look, you probably don't want me because I'm not going to follow those things that you rules that you have. Yeah. Yeah. And you wonder if Pasternak, if that, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know much about his reputation. I don't know if he's more of a partier, but there have been some a little bit of smoke swirling around him. Just his the uh, I think the broken army had a couple years ago. There was there was then these are only rumors that he that he was out. Uh, he slipped on some ice, whether that was alcohol <laughs> aided Related. or not. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, and that, it sounds horrible of me to bring it up without any sort of uh, established facts. But uh, if we're talking rumors and, and reputation in Boston, uh, people love Pasternak, but he, he might be one. Of, and, and even this season, when he when he went out of kind of his uh, against, I would say, advice to go practice with some guys, uh, and then being exposed to Corona and, and not getting any any practice time. So at the very least, he's got a little bit of a discipline uh, thing that he that the Bruins probably wish he would improve. So I mean, there's no way they would trade him. He's he's too good. But he does have a little bit of that thing that Sagan and Hamilton had. There would be a freaking there would be a riot in Boston if they traded Pasternak, no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, look at they quickly traded Sagan in a heartbeat, and that was a horrible trade or whatever the case may be. But they do what they do. Um, you know, you know, I you say okay, well, you bring up those rumors, but when an organization kind of let it lets it leak as much as they do about that, uh, well, not really lets it leak. It came right from some mouths like Hamilton, especially Hamilton speaks. And that was the big thing. And he spoke a lot about it, how he said that uh, he didn't want to be, he, he really just decided he didn't want to be there. Yeah. And uh, for that reason. So that was out of his own mouth. So not really a rumor, but when that happens, every, all the speculation seems to happen with players like that. Yeah. So where do you think Boston's heading for the future then? Uh, it seems like they could be, they're kind of on a little of a balancing act to me. How about you? Yeah. I mean, there's what I think they're doing and what I want them to do. And we already talked about what I want them to do. Kind of t take a pause for a minute. Uh, they haven't made a first round pick in two out of, th of the last three drafts. So keep that pick, which means you're maybe not buying a significant deadline um, and see what your young players can do in the hopes that you can maybe in the future only have to do a, a retool and not a rebuild when Bergeron really ages out and, and Marchand gets older. So uh, that's what I want them to do. What I think they're going to do is, is try to maximize the window that they have with Bergeron and Rask. Well, Rask is only on for one more year. Bergeron, like I said, getting older. Marchand in his, in his late twenties and, and I mean, sm doesn't get injured a lot, but it's kind of a, a smaller <laughs> little bit of a, a little a lot of a rat so he's exposed himself to maybe some some cheap shots that that might uh one day come up back to bite him on the back end of his career so um i i wonder if if they're probably going to try to maximize the window and i wouldn't be surprised to see them make another uh, another trade or at the deadline if if they feel like they're a contender and even this off season there, there's still things uh still rumors swirling around patrick line and and some and, and Hoffman and some of the has Hoffman signed yet? No, I sorry, I'm having a brain fart. <laughs> no, he has he hasn't signed yet. No. So yeah, um, I, I wonder if they're if they're in on any of those guys. Line, I just don't think they need another another sniper. I mean, we, when I talk about the Ducks, I'm like, we need all of the snipers and the Bruins. Uh, I think they're in a good spot with that, and I, I really want to see them kind of see where their defense is before they before they send anybody away to add them. And, and like we spoke a couple episodes ago, uh, the Jets are looking for NHL players because they don't want to take a step back. They just want to kind of shift around their, their roster. So, like, who, who are you going to send for line A? They're going to ask a lot. I mean, 
I, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't want them in on line A either, but we'll see. I think DeBrusque would be the first one on the board, and uh, so I don't know if that would really work out. Uh, I think you're, uh, yeah, I like what you're saying there. Uh, very, uh, I, I would have to agree as well. I think it looks like they're going to look at their young players, and then at the trade deadline, they'll decide to do some things. And I'm with you. Hopefully, in this cap, in this world, cap world, they can find flat cap world. They can find a player for a lower pick at least. You know, maybe if it's a defenseman because a defense because their defense isn't really coming up the way they thought, or more scoring. They could possibly get somebody on a one, still on a one or maybe two year deal for a third or fourth pick or something like that. The big things are like, what's Kasha going to, is Kasha going to turn it around? I know you've talked a lot about that. You have more insight on him than I do because being an Anaheim writer, uh, would you think Kasha is going to turn around this year? I mean, that'll be huge for them. I don't think so. Uh, Kasha and Richie, I, I, I kind of had two opposing views of those guys when they were in Anaheim. I loved Kasha. I, w- I was bummed that he couldn't play as much as he, as he should have with all the injuries he had. And Richie, on the other hand, I just felt never lived up to his potential and, when those guys came to Boston, uh, Richie was atrocious. I mean, <laughs> he was awful, and it made it, yeah. it took a couple of real bad penalties in the playoffs, very undisciplined, just like he'd been in Anaheim. I don't think he's around. He's under contract for another year in Boston. I can't see him sticking around after that or the Bruins wanting to re-sign him because it just doesn't feel like it's a good fit. And then Kasha, he's got all in the world, but how long until it's potential and uh, it's unrealized potential and instead of just <laughs> potential, like he, he, he had some flashes in the playoffs. He carried the puck pretty well. I think he had a couple assists. He, he really did help kind of like the analytics community likes to say drive play, but he just, he couldn't be that finisher that he was in the first year or two of his career that, that really gave ducks fans, uh, uh, some excitement. And, and I don't know, at this point, I don't know if he, if he, if he will be able to do that. He still has injury problems. He's, he's just, I, I think, unfortunately, he's not going to be that guy that people thought he would be. Yeah, there's a huge drop off. Uh, it seems that whatever his injuries are, are kind of in his head from what I watch him play. He, he, he used to be, he wasn't a perimeter player before, but now he's pretty much a perimeter for player and Richie I mean he's just not a smart player that's that's just flat out it's not it's not going to be a fit I don't know where he would fit honestly in what team unless you just want a guy who will hurt somebody somewhere along the line because he probably will uh I, I don't know he's just not a smart smart player he never never understood he, like I, the way Tortorella says it just doesn't get it yeah just doesn't he doesn't he, he really, I mean, he's gone from a, a top half of the first round, that's where he was selected, to like a, a borderline fourth line player. Like he, he, he'll probably be scratched on multiple occasions this year for the Bruins. If he, if, I don't know if they, what his contract specifics are, if they can even send him down to the AHL or not, but uh, he is, he's not, a, he's not a, a, a very impactful player on the positive end player. I could see him being on waivers for sure. And, and going through waivers at this point, uh, who's going to want to pick up any contract or a guy that basically has law lo- has completely failed in two organizations as it is as a young player. And then the last thing, I guess we'll look at Smith, right? You wanted to, did you want to talk about yeah. the Smith acquisition? Yeah, that was, I mean, maybe it's the fact that he played in Nashville, but I, I to be honest, I wasn't really, well versed on on him on Craig Smith, but then when I saw that his numbers, and I was like, "Wow, how, why have I not like heard more about this guy?" He, I mean, consistent twenty around twenty goals per season. Uh, good guy that 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 the the Bruins can insert uh, into the second or third line, and maybe get some power play time. So he's a he's a good he's a good player that I'm excited they got. They didn't have to pay out the wazoo for him. So uh, I think he's a great addition, is smart, and on a team like Nashville, who didn't have a lot of, I mean, they they have a were relatively well even roster in terms of talent, but they don't have a lot of guys who are like the 30, 40, 50 goal scorers uh, and playmakers. So uh, I wonder if Craig Smith on uh, playing on a line, uh, a top two role, a top sorry top two line role with the Bruins, if he can even increase his numbers that much more, maybe flirt with 30 goals this year i think he could if you put him in the right situation 
Um, the thing about Smith is he's just a great two-way player. Like, he's a hockey player's hockey player. He's, he's not really – He's good at every. He's he's above average in just about everything. And uh, one th- reason why you've never heard you don't we don't hear about him too much is because he's so low maintenance. Like you don't need to uh, do anything with Smith. You know what you're getting every game. Everybody loves him. And it's, and sometimes and he's very unassuming. And sometimes those guys kind of get you know just kind of forgot about or lost in the woodwork because people are talking more about these players. Some of these players that we're talking about, like Lion, these bigger personalities and stuff like that, where a guy like Smith is just, you know, even when his career is over, everybody's we're, like 10 years from now, we're going to say, remember Smith? Oh, yeah, I remember. You know, he's going to be one of those guys. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. That, not somebody that comes to the tip of your lips right away. Um, but uh, great defensive uh uh, winger and I would like to see him play higher in the lineup with some really strong talent and Nashville he didn't really have the upper echelon talent to play with like uh, Bergeron and Marshawn and stuff like that throw him up there and see what he can do give the guy 30 goal. I think he had a 30 goal season still in Nashville once though uh, 25 oh, is what 25? I'm saying. sorry I'm looking right at his, his cap friendly and his stats right now 25 goals in 17-18 um, but I think he I mean he can fill a role on any of those top three lines, and he'll be playing with talented players, Bergeron, Marchand, Krejci, mm-hmm. Pasternak, uh, even even Coyle. Like, uh, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's got some guys, and, he's, and he's, he can play multiple positions. So yeah. I think he's got a lot of potential. Um, and the thing that I love even more than that is that he he's, his availability. I mean, you look at it the last – six plus seasons he's played in natural 82 games 82 games missed four in 2016 17 only missed yes. three in 2017 18 missed five last year and then played the full season i think for nashville this year i don't i don't i think they must have he says 69 games i know they ended most teams ended 11 10 12 games early so he might have missed one but uh he miss really games. healthy guy phenomenal shape phenomenal shape and that's one of the big i remember hearing poil about that he's like one of the biggest things that we love about they loved about smith is he showed the young players what it means to be in the nhl and what you have to do because he was a fan he was a workout fanatic too which is always huge right so delhi this has been absolutely fantastic i love having you on and talking about your boston bruins you brought some great insight there uh you got some you got something i'm pretty excited about going on here you have something called uh the lost teams podcast that you're working on right now am i right yeah we're still grinding it out we were we're about i'd say eight tenths of the way ready to to start releasing so our first episode but yeah just covering uh covering some teams in all professional sports that have disappeared uh or moved back as far back as the 1800s as recently as the 70s 80s 90s whether they became insolvent and and just folded their operation or whether they moved and became another professional team even some teams that were in the minor leagues that somehow uh, and this is kind of the general theme of all the episodes uh, had a major impact on today's professional sports landscape. So um, my favorite one that that I did will be in the first episode is of the L.A. Blades. So I'll tease that. Just to, if you want to yeah. Google the L.A. Blades, uh, they have a very interesting legacy, uh, the minor league hockey team back in the in the 60s here. So I'm excited for that one. And then uh, for the hockey writers, uh, and we're going to have you on that show. Once we release it, we're going to have uh, Perlo as a guest a guest host telling a story of a team. Yeah. <laughs> Um, That's and then, yeah, the, the hockey writers uh, um, editing an article right now about uh, covering the, the best trade partners in Ducks franchise history. So I went back and kind of combed through all the trades the Ducks have made during their history and uh, kind of decided what their best trade partners have been in terms of other NHL franchises. So obviously you've got your Arizona slash Winnipeg's with the Solani trade. You've got your, your Oilers who have been partners with the Ducks on three pretty big trades uh, and the Maple Leafs who have just kind of had a volume thing with them. So I'm excited for that one too. I'm, I'm uh, uh, it's been a fun project. Awesome, buddy. I can't wait to read that. And I'm really excited for being part of that whole thing. That's going to be fantastic. I don't, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be uh, checking up on the old uh, uh, sports franchise. I've been just getting into all the other sports as well too, quite heavily too. So I'll be interested in seeing all sports and I hope you guys check it out too. Delhi is fantastic. Check him out on Twitter. Check out all his writing. 
I love his stuff. And uh, thanks for coming, Deli. Thanks you all for hitting the subscribe and the bell and liking all of this stuff. You keep me, uh, you, keep, you bring my ego up. And that, that needs to be because <laughs> I, I get a little hurt when you don't do that. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.